Everyone everywhere has secrets. Did you know that everyone has special powers and they've kept it a secret from me my entire life? But I won't stand for that. That's why I made a helmet. I call it machine that lets me read people's minds when I want to. Or Psychopomp for short. But something happened when I put it on. It didn't let me read people's minds, but it did let me see something else. A world that was hidden from me that everyone knew about. A world hidden in plain sight with all sorts of animals and creatures and dead bodies. There are catacombs hidden under every public government building. I will not allow any more secrets to be kept from me. This is the story of Psychopomp, a game made by Fading Club that leaves you disoriented, confused, and highly schizophrenic. The tutorial starts in this gloomy alley where you can use your helmet to see, chat, touch, open your inventory, and of course, hammer. When looking up, the first thing you're greeted with is a completely destroyed earth. Continuing down the path, they teach you how to use the functions on your helmet by making you talk to nondescript girl. She says, I can't take it, it's only going to get worse and worse. My first playthrough of this game on stream, I left her alone. But if you're wondering, yes, you can hammer her. Continuing on, you find this dog, where if you keep interacting with him, Yeah, this creature is known as the king of all dogs, and he says, Don't idle here, you have much to do. Don't worry, for there is a plan to everything. I'm sure you will see in due time, my friend. Unlike almost every character you meet later on, you cannot use your hammer to kill this dog. Past him is a red fog, which when you enter takes you to a menu screen that allows you to truly start the game. You can play these in any order you like, but number one is sewage treatment, number two is children's hospital, and number three is public school. To go in order, we will start with sewage treatment. As you can see, when the game is loading, you always get two tips, a gameplay tip and a real world tip. However, the real world tip gives you highly disturbing advice about real life. This one says, gameplay tip, sanity medication hurts your health. While real world tip says, every building from hospitals to homes contains a room that acts as the heart of the building, delivering blood and nutrients to the building's extremities. Try and find your house's heart. There are many different tips you can get, but I'm gonna show the most notable right now. All food you have ever eaten is rotten. You have never tasted fresh food. In 1956, a new disease appeared in Osaka, Japan. The symptoms included a strong cough, rash, and becoming a room. Luckily, the virus was contained and eradicated. Starting in 2001, the rooms have been rented out as a bed and breakfast. The real JFK's then aborted fetus was found by the Department of Justice in 2006. And most importantly, the Queen of Dragonflies is sleeping and smiling. Upon entering the dreary sewage treatment plant, our character says, It's not hard to enter a public building. The buffoon who invented locks and windows has never heard of a hammer. To go forward with addressing our character, it would be best to give her a name. When looking into what her name is, it's extremely difficult to find out, but on a Steam forum of their game, the developer Carbonic said, The protagonist's true name is hidden within the game. It's a bit of a mouthful though, so I'd say feel free to call her whatever you'd like. I actually found her name in the game on a paper, but for now, we will be calling her Venna. I will explain why later. Upon entering, Venna notes, Water treatment. Human waste being processed and cleaned. Made acceptable for consumption again. Chemicals being added to chemicals to remove chemicals. Continuing with her concern, she says, If water treatment is for our safety and concern, why is there an elevator heading straight into the human waste? What could be hidden down there? And if it's such a big secret, why is it so easy to go down there? Sick f Upon entering the elevator, you're met with a really cool loading screen. It's interesting to note that despite her obvious disdain for this area, she still has a big smile on her face, almost in complete derangement. 
Leaving the elevator, she finds herself in a hostile environment with crazy creatures just like she said the helmet could see. If you try to touch the first creature that you see, it says that it grabs your hand and she was barely able to manage to pull her hand free at the last moment. This creature is called Kawaii Stock and says, Oh hello, my, aren't you a cute one? Say, isn't there nothing better than being tangled up? Would you like to be tangled up? This is of course a statement worthy of the hammer. However, your hammer's use is not only killing the innocent, as there are many monsters and enemies that try to attack you while you explore these catacombs. While exploring, we find a note titled, April 19th, I feel like I just woke up the other day for the first time. I have memories before Sunday, but they just feel so hazy, so much less vivid. I feel so awake now, so real. I just can't stop smiling. Something good has happened. It's happened, and a beautiful first self-portrait. Down a tunnel later on, you find an abandoned church. Inside is a health syringe, as well as a statue of a person with dragonfly-looking wings. Behind the church is a creature known as a Thrate. These creatures are not hostile to Venna, even when startled like this albino Thrate. While exploring, if you do happen to get jump-scared and then killed by one of these terrifying creatures, you do have to start the level completely over. Yeah. We eventually find a clue as to why we're down here when talking to Nugget, who says, it's simply so fun to live off human waste. We funnel human byproduct into our queen, who in turn replicates the raw material into flesh and milk for us. To talk to this queen, we need a key. And in order to get that key, we talk to Biggest Fan, who says, my key, my special key, the queen gave it to me. My special love gave it to me. If anyone ever took it, I'd explode, I'd be so mad. If you happen to take the key before killing him like I did on stream, he will actually explode and put you at 1 HP. With the key in hand, we are now able to approach the queen. When touching her, she feels cold and glassy like porcelain. The guard next to her says she was a good queen. However, like all good queens, she must eventually be recycled. Do us a favor and use those hands of yours to get the job done. Using a key she gave us, we extend a bridge over to this lever, which we are inclined to pull, only to hear this. Next to this lever is a Thrate woman who says that she was there looking for food to bring to her village, but there was none. We return to the queen to find out the lever we pulled was a guillotine that beheaded her. This seems to be Venna's goal though, as she is given a prize. An egg of the earth. We are now returned to the main menu where there is a new location called Transient Location. These locations are all very mysterious and seem to appear at random after you have completed other locations. They are all important in their own way to help shape the story and learn more about what's happening. However, I'm going to cover them later on. For now, we're going to the Children's Hospital. This is one of the scariest areas in my opinion. Venna describes this place saying, Children's hospitals have the same smell to them. It's a clean smell that somehow makes you want to vomit, like a mixture of bleach and Elmer's glue. I love it. Doctors will always smile at you when they say they cannot help you. Give them the copay and die more as they tell you you aren't full of cancer, aren't full of incurable illnesses. Hospitals feel like the safest place to me, even though I know they aren't. They're the least safe place, a place that will swallow you whole and give you disease. A place that will cut you open and make others feel good about it. As you approach the elevator, she says, And through it all, the elevator is there. I can smell it. That smell of rust and petrol breaking through the clean hospital smell. The doors wide open, waiting for me to enter. When you enter the hospital, you're greeted by an eternal nurse who says, Welcome to the lower wing. Here we help to preserve the most important individuals of humankind, both in honor of their contributions and as a sign for the rest of humanity to follow. From the main hall, there are three corridors that lead to three separate patients. Plato, Cleopatra, and Alexander the Great. A nearby eternal nurse explains the situation, saying, As thanks for their contributions to society, our patients are surrounded by their most favorite things in life. They'll never get bored, and they'll never be unhappy. This is a great explanation, and she was very helpful, but unfortunately, I need that key card. 
All of these patients are described as giving you no pleasure to touch. Plato is surrounded by this ambience that sounds like children. I was right about everything in my life except for the cave. I was totally off the mark with that. No matter, there is no better sound than the sound of children, the touch of children, the smell of children. Socrates agrees with me, so you know it's good and right. Cleopatra is surrounded by this noisy ambience of a crowd. There's nothing better in life than having people think you're helping them. Popularity is absolutely key when moving forward. If you play your cards right, anything seems necessary. A massacre, a young girl with a slit throat, the discussion of a people, a crushed slave revolt. They'll do it all for you, if you know how. Finally, Alexander is surrounded by the ambience of battle. There's nothing greater in this world than the feeling of battle. To conquer and to be conquered. To feel that warm slick on your hand. Wouldn't you agree? I would do anything to feel another man's blood again. By finding and killing more nurses with key cards, you can eventually get downstairs and shut them off one by one. As you continue to explore beneath the hospital, you are attacked by an unknown creature that is possibly the doctor of these patients. While exploring, you might see this secret wall that you can actually break and find the secrets behind it. Inside is a floating cochlea that says, I used to be a number cruncher for a big corporation and it was so boring and awful. A boring businessman. Then I got extensive surgery to be a free floating cochlea and I've never been happier. Going past this weird creature, you will find an even bigger, weirder creature. The nearby nurse explains this creature, saying, Study of neoparasitics is very important to us. Parasites are some of the most efficient creatures on the planet. This new parasite was developed from the body of a young teacher in Berlin. We have very high hopes for her. The other nurse says, It's hard to turn a human into a parasite. Most people would never want to be a parasite. That's why her brain is filled with dopamine 24-7 to keep her chugging, and it works. Outside the room is a very important note. This note depicts two very powerful beings who create the heavenly bodies and weave the universe. The Queen of Venus and the King of Mercury. As you get close to shutting off the final patient, you can hear something from the wall. What does this mean? The cochlea from earlier was obviously a clue to listen. If you listen closely to the entire message, it makes a code. The only words that don't represent letters are open and end. When researching the Psychopomp website, after you scroll to the very bottom, you will see two small words, open end. Upon clicking these, it will ask for a password, and if you put the code that you heard, you will get this image, fun. Fun's most fun when it's with you. From sky to shining star, together forever, it's true. To travel near and far, if we break too many toys, and if that makes you blue, we'll reunite that king and queen and make the worlds anew. Fun will be eternal then, we'll play forevermore. The toys will now have lives again, the better for us four. This is important. After turning off all of the patients, you will find them dead and broken upstairs. But for completing your task, you will also find your prize. Another egg of the earth. Going back to the main menu, the only place left to go besides transient locations is public school. Upon entering, there are posters everywhere that say, keep that smile going. Venno remarks, when you sleep inside a school, you learn new things. When I sleep inside a school, I taste new things. When nearing the elevator, she states, The elevator is down this way. I can feel it even if I can't see it. It's like a vein that goes down into a heart. Walking in, the head of production says, Welcome to my factory. I trust that you will find your own way around here. This is the main factory floor. 
I know this is a bit much to ask, but there is a machine surrounding my head, one that will smash it into fine putty. Will you go and turn off the safeguards so that machine will turn on? Walking further, we find a note. It's titled Open Valley. It describes a child that looks at the sky and sees stars and planets. However, scribbled over is, stupid, there are no stars, with a picture of three stars. Scattered throughout the factory are medallion men. This one says, having a factory under an elementary school is so pragmatic, wouldn't you agree? It affords us so many opportunities we wouldn't have otherwise. The head of the factory's up ahead. The f keeps begging us to kill him. Doesn't he know how important it is to continue manufacturing? The head of production pleads with us, saying, My life has turned into an endless line of misery and illness. I beg of you, if you have any mercy in your soul, please kill me and make it as painful as possible. The first safeguard is blocked by a cog head enemy. After getting past it, a medallion man is blocking the safeguard and is belligerent and does not want you to do it. Therefore, you have no choice but to kill him. The medallion man next to him explains that this is his favorite building in the factory. When a small child has outlasted their use, we melt them down into slag and turn that into new butter knives and egg slicers. I think that recycling is beautiful, don't you? Next to him you can see the burning furnace producing egg slicers and the cries of children. The second safeguard pathway is filled with giant smashing presses. Once you get past them, a medallion man explains that this is where they make parasitic enamel. Once mature, the enamel will be applied to the teeth of the children up above and they will learn new things from the words they speak. This information is fed to a generative model which will then use it to create new lessons for the children. The medallion man blocking the safeguard is just as belligerent and you have to kill him in order to deactivate it. Now that all the safeguards are removed, we return to the head of production to grant him his final wish. We are rewarded, of course, with the final egg of the earth. Returning to the menu, we can now enter Entrance. Welcome to the Mariana Trench. You've made it to the center of the earth. All three eggs of the earth that you have collected seem to be floating around one thing. This is it, the life meat of the world. I see it, and somehow I know exactly what to do. Finger movements and speaking, words I know but have never heard. A warmth, a love, I will make you anew, born to flesh from ash and clay. There you are, my wonderful child. This world has been changed, it's been twisted into something it's not. It will change more, perhaps that is inevitable. Let us awaken your siblings. There are no secrets now, I see everything within my domain. Thank you, dear helmet, you are perfect in every way, baby. I'm feeling pretty good, let's leave this hole and never look back.
So that's it. You beat Psychopomp. You're leaving the game more confused than when you first started it. But unfortunately, there's nothing else to do. Right? When you press continue, you will see a new location called Forbidden Location. But before we get into that, do you remember how I said I would cover transient locations later? Now is the time. The first location is Thrait Village. Remember that Thraits are one of the only races that are not hostile or belligerent towards us. This is their home. Everyone seems to talk about how they're starving, with even a child talking about how he ate a rat. The most important aspect of these creatures is who they worship and what they have drawn on the wall. The next transient location is called Starting Point. Here you find a Thraight woman lost in thought with a giant hatched chrysalis next to her. The Thraight woman states, When nobody was looking, the queen's chrysalis hatched. That means she's out there, who knows where. I can't help but fear, there are vermin dogs who would lead her astray. I must have faith, the queen will return. The next transient location is called Daddy's Bad Place. Here is the final transient location. It doesn't have a name. Now, we can enter the forbidden location, the library. This is a very simple, dreary place with one note inside. This note explains the Kaldman Four, a brilliant interstellar phenomenon. Four brilliant lights leading what looks to be a trail of absolute darkness across the night sky. Many religious leaders have pointed to the Kaldman Four as a sign for jubilation. They were characterized as a set of several superheated interstellar objects moving through space at speeds previously unheard of. But what is the dark space behind them?
slightly different mass seems to have found a different owner. A young man in a motel in the middle of the desert. A familiar dog, and when we interact with him, How nice to meet you. I do say, my good sir, your face seems to have broken and become abstracted. No matter, it happens to the best of us. We have more important things at hand. I am the king of all dogs, and I bring you a very important warning. Look to the skies, do you not feel it? When you set your eyes upon the bloody earth above, do you not see it? Something terrible has awoken. Soon it will descend upon the landscape and bring about utmost destruction. I must beseech you, you must put an end to it. Only you have the power to do so. I know a business-minded individual like yourself will have no problem figuring this out. We must make haste. I have some associates that I will introduce to you right away. Come along now. There's no time to lose. That's Psychopomp. Do you remember that note right outside the secret room? Did you notice the cross on the door in Daddy's Bad Place? Do you remember the Caldman 4 note from the library? Do you remember the book's rejection of stars? Did you hear the message on the TV? Do you remember Venna's transformation? Do you remember the starting point? A hatched chrysalis? Did you see the Thraits' drawings of their deities? Did you understand the message on the unsecured channel? Worshipped by many. Four. 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 Suddenly, all the puzzle pieces fit together. Our character Venna is a freshly hatched deity, the Queen of Venus, Savenash Vishneri. The Queen was awoken by the King of Dogs. She searched far and wide in order to get back her child. The father, King of Mercury, has now awakened as well. This is Psychopump, a complete mystery even with all the puzzle pieces in place. Are the Caldman 4 a threat that Venna is going to have to stop using the help of the King of Mercury? Are Venna and the King of Mercury a part of a family with the dog and their child making up the Caldman 4? Is the King of Dogs using Venna for himself, or is he on their side? Let me know what you think. I only know one thing. I had fun. Seems this and told me I should cut you to the pieces and told